In the abstract, we all know that artificial intelligence will have a significant impact on our work and business. But in practice, are most of us just going to be spectators? Or even pray? Or could we all be actors? A few months ago, I was in China discussing AI in a series of executive workshops. I was totally focused on the complex managerial discussions surrounding AI. A young interpreter facilitated the English-Chinese discussion. After a meeting, she came up to me and said, could I ask you a question, sir? Sure, I said. Well, what will happen to me? Amazing. This talented young woman not only translated the discussion, but followed the content and started to think about the potentially dire implications for her own career. But then, without waiting for an answer, she said, and can you tell me how I can learn about, more about AI and apply it myself? Bingo. I think we should all be asking ourselves this question. Far too many people think of AI as this abstract, somewhat mysterious force in the hands of expert geeks and stall. Instead, AI is there for all of us to use. In fact, our extensive research with MIT SMR has shown that the bottleneck for widespread application of AI is not technical expertise. It is a diverse set of people developing an intuitive understanding of AI and putting it to work. Now, the good news is AI is actually rather simple at its core. However, it has some unusual properties that require getting used to. So, let us take them one by one. First, you should understand AI is an intuition machine. Now, we all think of our computers as logic machines. You probably never looked at your laptop and shouted, cool, great intuition. Now, with AI, you might one day do just that. Because if you think about it, you could define intuition as acting based on experience and potentially having a hard time explaining yourself. Well, that's precisely what AI does. It learns from experience. Now, how does it do it? Well, in, for an AI system, experience comes in the form of fresh data and some kind of feedback how it's doing so far. When learning, AI acts like a hiker trying to find a valley in the fog. Now, if you can't see much, your best guess is to take one little step in the steepest direction downwards. In the AI world, that means adjusting your parameters a little bit in the steepest direction towards your goal. Now, you might call it deep learning or backpropagation, but the basic principles of AI are actually rather simple. They then get enhanced with some great ideas and lots of data and processing power. Now, if you take pictures of animals and applaud cats, AI learns to recognize cats. Now, replace cats by credit card fraud or cancer cells, and you can see how from simple mechanisms you can start addressing rather complex problems. Now, AI is that effective because it's actually very fast. When machines learned intuition by AI, they didn't forget how to do calculations. And it's the combination of the two that made Watson win Jeopardy and DeepStack win online poker. You might all know the famous book by Daniel Kahnem and the Nobel Prize laureate, Thinking Fast and Slow, how humans are great in intuition, but frankly lousy at calculations. Now, AI-enabled machines are good at both calculations and intuition. So you might, you might describe them as thinking fast and fast. Now, with these properties and lots of determination, AI has largely cracked vision and language. Now, this is super important for business, because with vision, machines can act in the real world, giving us robots and self-driving cars. And with language, they can start interacting with human and accessing human knowledge. However, AI is not a magic wand. What you should also know, 
you cannot simply buy intelligence. You can, in fact, download almost all naked AI algorithms, even for free. But they are not natively intelligent. Thus, they have no business value. Instead, you need to nurture their intelligence by training them on data, lots of data, often your data. A little bit like providing first experiences to a newborn child. AI is not ready-made. The nurturing is required to build the intelligent tool itself. Now, you also should not copy humans. Why? Well, in my youth, I used to play chess. I was actually quite good at chess. I became German youth champion and played Garry Kasparov in the world championship. Now you guess the outcome. <laughs> Irrespective, I was in real pain when I saw Gary become the first world champion in chess to lose a match against a machine. Now this was a big deal for AI, because for more than 40 years, AI thought, if you solve chess, you solve intelligence. A chess-playing ape is smart. Now, when they finally did it, the AI community was disappointed. They used too much brute force, didn't have any insight or beauty, and most importantly, it proved completely irrelevant to solve anything other than chess. But the real lesson is, submarines don't swim. What I mean by that is, machines perform tasks differently from humans. A self-driving car should not copy human drivers any more than today's car should copy horses. Now let's see what we have. A basically simple, fast and fast intuition machine with improving vision and language skills, whose intelligence you cannot buy but have to nurture with lots of data and feedback, and who solves problems differently from humans. In other words, drop your scare. AI is not that complex. It can help you find patterns even in our real world populated by humans. You just have to train it with lots of data and tailor the approach to AI, not people. We know from hundreds of hands-on projects and our in-depth research with MIT that these are the core ingredients of applying AI. How well you master it will separate winners and losers. Now, I want to take you out of your seats and into the real world. Some years ago, we worked with the head of operations of a Korean copper smelter. Yes, a copper smelter. It just promised you the real world. The guy was having problems with the purity of his copper. Now, his engineers had exhausted their algorithms, so he needed to try something new. He did have several years of operational data. So we jointly sat down and trained his very own intuition machine. When we were done, the algorithm proclaimed, <clears throat> based on my experience, <clears throat> I would propose to run the process this way. Well, with modern AI, you can get that with or without a Germanic Frankenstein accent. <laughs> now, the guy followed the advice, the purity of the copper increased, and the company doubled its results. Now you might think, hmm, these smelter people were probably really behind. But the UK-based DeepMind has done it to Google. Now the Google, the mother company running the world's largest AI system. In fact, it built an algorithm for power management that decreased the energy costs at Google data center by 15%. At the Google scale, you're talking real money. Now, tailoring your approach to AI actually does require a specific structure. You want to keep action decentral, but centralize all learning. That's totally different from humans, where action and learning live in the same body. And it allows for an unprecedented pace of developing intelligence and scale of applying it. Here's how it works. Suppose you're the proud owner of an entire network of coffee shops, and you want to offer a customer, let's call her Jean, her very special pastry to go with her morning coffee. Now, do not just offer her the average popular choice. With AI, 
you can now gather all data from all customers to tailor the very specific offering to the context of gene. Have you seen the genes of this world? Love it. Remember, with AI, the action happens in the field, but the learning happens at headquarters. Self-driving cars run autonomously, but learn centrally. Now, when people, and by that I mean all of us, start applying the knowledge of AI, we have seen the applications explode. When you are in procurement, you can get help reviewing contracts. When you run critical equipment, you preempt um, some uh, uh, requirements for uh, maintenance. When you are a, let's say, recruiter for new jobs, you delegate interviewing and scheduling. And if your neck happens to be online for cybersecurity, you definitely want to recruit a fast and fast assistant. Now, we could go on like this forever. Let me return to our interpreter and allow me a final remark. People sometimes worry they might be out of work if they start applying AI. But tasks are not jobs, and jobs is not work. The interpreter was right to think that some of her tasks will be automated. But she can redefine her job, augmenting her performance with AI. And she might even expand her career, applying AI to all those untapped opportunities in you know, trans-language applications all over the world. AI is not this destructive, mysterious force. Now, it was tough, but we just went through the peculiarities with, of AI jointly. And with this intuitive understanding, we can start to moving from mere spectators or prey to becoming actors in the AI world. We become more effective and we can jointly explore new frontiers. Thank you. <laughs>